In this case, we're pretty darn close, and this one um, is pretty much a 3 16th inch pod. Hi, and welcome back to another agronomic update here in North Central Iowa. I'm Phil Long, Regional Agronomist for Liquid Grow here, and today we're talking about fungicide timing in soybeans. Talk a little bit about the diseases and a little bit of how to hit that window of R3, which is the, the critical time in terms of fungicide and uh, seeing a return on investment that R3 time frame has been researched a lot uh, to, to be the most important uh, period at, at, this, at the point in reproduction to, to protect the plant. So I've got a few plants here. We're going to talk through some of these diseases and we're going to start with that staging that's uh, so critical and eludes a lot of, uh, a lot of folks uh, because it is challenging. We grow indeterminate soybeans and they keep growing. They're going to, after R1, they continue to add nodes, uh, add pods and flowers, which is a good thing. We need that because we have shorter season up here. So adding the nodes and pods and flowers and everything after it starts reproduction is, is critical to getting the yields we get. However, it can be a challenge to stage them. So I left the uh, top trifoliate on here because you can see it's not touching. They look like they're closed, but it's the leaves, the edges are not touching. So that's considered the top trifoliate on this plant. So you count down from that one, two, three, four. So there's the top four nodes on this particular plant that I pulled the leaves off so you can see it a little easier. So after R2, we focus on these top four nodes for the rest of the season. Just remember that after R2, uh, it's, it's the top four nodes. Top four nodes is probably the most important. R2 is the only time we look at the top two nodes. So what are we looking for? A 3 16th inch pod on one of the top four nodes. In this case, we're pretty darn close. And this one um, is pretty much a 3 16th inch pod. Uh, if you look below that, we have one that's about the size of my, a little bigger than my fingernail. That one's bigger than 3 16th for sure. So we are, we are right there. Um, I, I pulled a few plants, but uh, obviously want to check a few. This particular plant here, I have the leaves still on. Uh, you count back one, two, three, four. And uh, it's got a small pod right there as well, uh, but it probably technically wouldn't be quite three, three sixteen. So we're right on the cusp of basically hitting R3. R3 is about a 10 day window, so keep that in mind, R2. So R1's a couple days, uh, up to five days, R2. Uh, is, uh, is about five days or so, and then we hit R3. R3 takes about 10 days, and then uh, we keep on going down the line. But just remember, um, it's kind of a tight window from R1, R2 to R3, and at this point in most, in most areas, we're probably getting close, if not, to, if not close to or past uh, the beginning of R3. So many areas may have already started that, that R3 stage. So what do we want to look to, for to make sure that we're seeing an ROI on a fungicide out of soybeans? Well, obviously there's got to be disease out there. We want to make sure we're seeing something, otherwise we're spraying for nothing and protecting a plant for nothing. In this case, given the environmental conditions we've had this year, this field looks really good. Uh, there's very little disease out here. We see a little septoria brown spot. You can see it on this dead senesce leaf here, and these, these bottom leaves have some septoria brown, brown spots setting in. Uh, that's not a disease of concern in terms of economic. Um, we never typically see an issue with that because it's in the lower canopy. The ones that scare me the most are, are the upper canopy diseases, things like frog eye, uh, frog eye leaf spot, which has uh, circular necrotic uh, lesions with a, a kind of distinguishing brown or, or maroon purplish halo around them. And that one can set in. It can spread very quickly. Uh, varietal resistance does make a difference, uh, but some varieties uh, don't have ratings for it if they're if they're newer. So just keep that in mind in this field, like I mentioned, the worst thing I'm seeing is probably um, a crop oil injury here from the herbicide. So uh, not a lot at, at this point as we're approaching R3. Uh, however, the second factor that I wanna bring into the equation that makes a big difference if you look at research is the insects. And that's a lot of times where we see uh, a benefit on the soybean side comes from having that insecticide in there. So I'd encourage you to incorporate that if you're seeing a lot of insects out there. I've seen uh, Japanese beetles. I've had several of them out here. We see some damage uh, on the, the, the leaves here. I've also noticed some stink bugs, which can be an issue, but they're probably more so an issue a little later as it develops pods. You've probably all seen a, a seed in a pod that's kind of deflated or aborted, um, and that a lot of times comes from things like a piercing sucking insect like a, a stink bug. They pierce in there and that aborts that particular seed. But there's a lot of other insects, ones I'd say probably keep an eye out for. Japanese beetle, bean leaf beetle, 
uh, and uh, grasshoppers for sure. Probably the, the most common ones uh, every year that come in to just in varying degrees, but grasshoppers, look at how small they are. If they're small and you're seeing a lot of damage, that means they're going to grow bigger and they're going to eat more. Uh, so you want to make sure that, uh, that you're paying attention to that because typically we see, especially once we approach these mid reproductive stages, we see benefit from that insecticide because of that. We see a lot of damage uh, from certain insects uh, and that can really boost uh, your, your return on investment in a fungicide insecticide application. So keep those things in mind as you're out there. Don't forget to scout uh, for aphids as well. Those are going to be in the top part of the plant. Look for that, that new foliage. Uh, they like that, uh, that good to eat, that, that uh, scrumptious top part of the plant. That's where they're going to be. So look at the underside of the leaves. Looking for the aphids as if they come down from the north. With that, hopefully uh, that helps you a little bit in looking at some of the diseases out in the field. Um, and as always, give us a call if you have any questions. And we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Stay in the know with Liquid Grow.